So for some reason or another, the game Shattered Pixel Dungeon appealed to you, or any Pixel Dungeon for that matter. And you start up the game, the only class available at first is the Warrior. If you start, you descend into the dungeon, surrounded by all this grass, surrounded by all this stuff, no idea what to do. Well, you've come to the right place, because I know it's a lot of fun to die over and over again and learn by experience, but after a while that can get a little tiring. So let me play through the sewers for you and I will give you absolutely every advice to step, step by step, everything I'm doing, I will break it all down. So grass can have benefits for you. It can have beneficial seeds and it can also have dew drops, which go in your water skin, which heal you. So I will always almost step on every piece of grass because I'm trying to get every little inch of, here we go, here is our first dew drop. And what I will do is um, you can click right where you are to pick it up, or you can click on this little button that pops up on the side. There's another one. So this time I'm just gonna click on the button. And if you are on a computer, you can also hit the space bar to pick it up. I also said C underneath it. Yeah, so C also works to pick things up. Well, we have basically explored the first um, room here. There's almost always at least two doors in the room with the stairs. So if there's only one door, I may go around the walls and I'll hit this uh, magnifying lens and I'll hit it twice and that'll search in a little three by three around me and I would search along all the walls. But of course, since I search here, I would actually go up three because now I would search the most spot here and then you all go up there, etc. But most likely since there's already three doors, we don't have to worry about that. So moving on, we'll stick our head out the door and every time you take a step, you can see this little look down here. When I move, you'll see a little cog, a little thing spin. You see it? See it spin? And if I wait a turn, it'll just barely spin. So that's the turn timer. And every time you take an action, that turn goes. Um, the reason I bring it up is because food is, is a resource. You will get hungry over time. So if you just stand still, you'll eventually get hungry. You will eventually run out of food and you will starve to death. The reason I bring this up is because if you want to really min-max, you walk in the most efficient way. So we cut corners. So instead of going like, you know, one, two, three, four, we'll go like one, two. Or, you know, so if we start here, instead of going one, two, three, we'll go one, two. And that saves us a full turn, eventually saves us food. And then we can use the food to heal up rather than just to sop us. So we step through this door and this rat here has a little exclamation point. That means it's awake and it sees us and it's coming to fight us. So one thing you always can do is you can hit your magnified lens and examine. And now the one key point here is it doesn't take a turn. So the game stays paused and you can look at your enemy and just read, get used to reading the descriptions um, because most likely the, the key or strategy to defeating the enemy will be written in the description. So for example, they're only life-threatening in large numbers. So yes, you know, they're rather weak. So we don't have to worry about them too much um, for that. Because of that, I'm gonna save my range weapons. I'm actually not going to attack it. So the main thing I'm gonna do here, let's just zoom in. And one thing um, you might notice that each little spot here is a square. So I'll step to the square behind me and then I'm just gonna hit the wait button. I'm gonna let the rat come to me. And now, it just stepped through the door and you'll notice when I hit it, it'll be an exclamation point. See that quick little yellow exclamation point? That means I surprised it. If you surprise an enemy, you get 100% accuracy and sometimes you even do bonus damage as well. That's just the one time. Unfortunately, now it is aware and I won't be surprised it anymore, but you see I'm able to, to you know, leverage that bonus damage I got from the surprise. Another benefit is we're fighting in this narrow hallway. We don't have... If another enemy came from here, from the left, we can't get surrounded. And we would watch these doors and we can, even without vision, we can still be able to see if the door opens. So we know if we're about to get inserted from behind. So we have a bunch of different items here on the ground. I'll just keep doing the examine and having a look at it. So this is telling me this is a stone of intuition. This is a rune stone and it's a weaker version of the magic scroll identification. So rather than directly identifying it, it allows you to guess. So we will get more into that in a moment. And here is some more food. And this here is, we'll just go ahead and click on it since it's in our inventory down here. If you're on mobile, you won't have the full, it may, may look more like this. It'd be a little more condensed as well. But if you are on PC, 
or Mac, you can have your whole inventory open. We'll just go ahead and click on it here. But if you were on mobile, you would click on um, your backpack here and then it would open up in the main screen in front of you. And we can look in our inventory without spending any time. So this is an arcane stylist. And you can inscribe a magical glyph on your armor. Um, it is random and there are weaker and more powerful versions, you know, and they're more rare and more common versions as well. Um, we want to save that until we're on an armor that we're going to keep for the majority of the game. We, you do get a few of them, so they're not, you know, super precious, but they are fairly precious. Here is some gold on the ground and you can always examine and see like how much it is. Um, if you're worried about traps, you can go hit uh, examine twice and it'll explore around you. If there's a trap, you will discover it. Let's step in through the door here. So here's an example. Instead of going one, two, I'm going to cut the corner and just go one and save us a bit of on our food. I mean, that's very high end micromanaging, but it does definitely add up. Another thing to note is these diagonals, you can use your range weapons through diagonal. A lot of these corners, um, you can cut the corners. Like you could probably throw something over here. Let's step through this door and we have a snake. So let's go ahead and examine the snake. So interesting, it puts it in yellow for us. Um, a little something to pay attention. So you can, oh, here we go. So yeah, you can perform a surprise attack by attacking while out of the snake's vision. One way is to let the snake chase you through a doorway, then strike just as it moves into the door. Because the main reason you want to do that for the snake is um, they are capable of quickly slithering around blows, making them quite hard to hit. So if we were just fighting it, we would dodge and miss and dodge and miss. And even though it doesn't hit very hard, it would whittle us down way more than we need to. If you've ever played D&D, um, there is a thing called armor class and that makes it harder to hit. So we're going to step back. We're going to hit weight. And often very weak creatures who are unarmored can still have a high armor class because they are very agile. So the snake would be like an agile creature. So since we didn't take it out in the first attack, um, I brought it back to the next door because sitting there and trying to fight it over and over there is going to do a lot of extra damage. So when we move away like that, since it is the same speed, it can't move and attack us on the same turn. So this looks like a weapon. We could even examine it if we want just to make sure it's not a trap or something. So here we have a quarter staff and now we will get into the um, strength requirement. So let's go ahead and pick it up. And you see that it is 12, where our worn short sword here is 10. Well, if we click on our character icon, it will be up here on mobile. We can see our strength is only 10. So click on this here. Um, it requires 12 strength to use, and this weapon is probably too heavy for us. So we can't efficiently use it at this point, but we will find some potions of strength. And if you see this little icon over here, that means there is an enemy in sight. And so it shows us right here. So if you're zoomed in too tight and you don't notice any enemies and this little thing pops up, you know there is actually an enemy on the screen. So you can zoom out and have a look at it. So the rat is sleeping right now, um, but every turn we take in its vision, it has a chance of waking up. Now it is awake. I'm going to be a little cautious. A couple options here is I could come up here, go in this door and hide back here and get the surprise attack. But... We don't know what's in this door. There could be a bunch of monsters in there and we'll may soon find ourselves surrounded. So what I will do is actually step back. I'm going to wait a couple turns here. I'm going to keep my eye on this door and these doors and make sure no wandering monsters are coming up from behind us. I'm just going to wait. But the reason for doing this is I don't want to break line of sight too early because it can forget where I am and it'll lose track of me and then it'll stop coming to the door and start wandering another direction. And then all this time we spent dragging it backwards uh, is wasted. So we can click on it to attack and we can also click over here. Attacking over here is a little safer. Like you, it, uh, you can't miss click if you're just making sure to click on that. But um, a nice thing about this game is if you click ahead of time where you want to go, it will take the most efficient pass. See it cut corners that whole way. Same if we cut click here, it comes up and goes to egg mill. That also counts for traps. If you see a trap, it will automatically um, not walk on it for the most part. Sometimes it does step on poisonous plants. So sometimes you do have to be careful about micromanaging. Um, this is a trap. So we will examine the trap and it'll tell us everything we need to know about it. So it shoots a dart at the nearest target. So keep that in mind. If an enemy is the nearest target, it will shoot the enemy. And this is an interesting thing. Well, let's do the examine. 
I think you may be noticing a trend here where you just examine everything. So this will heal you and satisfy your hunger. Um, it also does a couple of different things. It can take a curse off. So, cur so we can st start talking about curses. Um, unidentified items have a chance of being cursed and there is a scroll that will remove the curse. So it's very risky to put on an item if it's not identified. But since this is here, this could take off the curse. So I'm willing to risk that maybe it's cursed. So let's go ahead and equip it. It's not cursed. So I don't have to worry about that. But you know, it's a good, I don't want to put on a curse, potential curse if um, I don't have a way to remove it. Well, I'll put on my regular sword again. And uh, keep in mind when you do equip, it, it does take turns. Uh, sometimes it even takes two turns. So if enemies are around, they can hit you while you're switching your, switching your equipment. Another use of this well is you can fill your water skin completely to full with it. See, it's being used to store healing water, so it makes sense that healing water could fill it up. I'm full health already, but just... So I think I will save this. One main um, strategy is to save things. Now keep in mind, running back to it in the future takes time and takes turns, and that weighs on our health. Um, not our health, but our food resources. So, you know, you're always kind of um, juggling and... managing plus and minuses. You know, there is a, a cost for every choice you take. In this case, it's getting the most out of this well versus having to spend our food. Um, another thing we can do here is thinking about the surprise attack. If this square was also black, we could surprise um, as the rat comes through. Unfortunately, it's not... I don't have a way to do that right now. Um, since I'm still level one, I'll come back to the door. Still, when we get a little stronger, here's our experience right here, five out of 10. We can just start fighting the rats in the open and that will be more beneficial, a um, little more efficient than constantly fighting. So you see when that rat walked over the grass, it dropped a seed. So we can examine the seed. Um, you know, first time playing, you may not know what any of this stuff is. So it's always useful to examine it before stepping on it. So they actually contain a chemical that has a strong neutralizing agent. So anything that steps on this plant is cleansed of many negative effects. So here's a snake. It's a long way to bring it back. So it's sleeping right now. So if we examine it while it's sleeping, do we get any hints? We don't. So here's my, oh, the guidebook popped up. So let's keep in mind on the guidebook. As your first playthrough, you will get these nice tutorials and your, um, Icon up here will start to flash as well as a little note in your log here. So what we will do is um, you're guaranteed to hit them. So a high dodging slippery snake, you want to be guaranteed to hit. Even the most evasive enemies can't dodge a surprise attack like wraiths and snakes. So what we're actually going to do here is use our stone. So if we click it once, it automatically targets it. See that yellow uh, box around it? And so we'll click again. And it throws that. Another thing we could do is click and then we could just pick and manually aim. One of the biggest mistakes I make is clicking too fast and it will target uh, the first enemy I encountered. And that sometimes is not the enemy I want to uh, fight. So let's go ahead and pick our stone back up. Speaking of ranged weapons, they have a durability. So this is three stones and each stone can be used five times before it breaks. So that's something to keep in mind. So this one is four or five right now. Here's another trap. So we will just walk diagonal around it, but to show off the, um, the smart pathing, if we just click on this door, notice we dodge it on its own. So here we have a potion. Let's examine the potion. It's crimson. Who knows what it will be, what it'll do or when drunk or thrown. So if we are to look, if we are to go up here to the book, and go to the little sword and this tab here at potions. When you first start playing, these are all gonna be question marks. You won't know what any of these potions are. Nothing is identified at first except the potion of healing because each class has an ability to identify certain things, different scrolls or different potions. The warrior can identify healing. We don't know what this is and it's random for every playthrough. So it's always going to be different. 
And now these, keep in mind, can be um, destroyed by environmental effects, such as you know explosions, traps, etc. I'm going to keep bringing the rats back to the door and putting them here. I potentially made a mistake there by stepping into this square. If I had stepped into this square, I could move back and fight the rat through another door. Now, if I wanted to move here, I would be hit for free. Um, the advantage to stepping here is certain enemies can't move into this square. If I'm right here, there's a chance that a rat could move in and then I could end up having to fight two things at once. So advantages and disadvantages to all of our choices. This is some water. We'll use this to put out fire. If we're ever lit on fire, we want to step in water, but we want to not be in water if someone's shooting us with frost or electricity because it amplifies the effect. Vice versa, you do want to shoot uh, creatures with frost or electricity if they are in the water. So we'll use certain things to our advantage. So right now it's a long way back the door so i'm going to go ahead and fight the rat here but what i will do is um just step up once knowing the rat's going to step up once and then we'll fight right here here now we've leveled up so when you level up you get talent points so we'll go ahead and click on our character and we'll go here to the star tab and we'll pick a talent these are our four talents i'll cover them as we go over them i think i like to choose the iron will because it immediately increases our shield. So when you're picking talents, my recommendation is to choose something that benefits you immediately. Um, whenever you identify an item, you heal for two. That could be useful, but we're not identifying anything right yet. You identify things faster. So we could put a quick two points in here and we'll be able to identify uh, this quicker. Um, speaking towards identify while we're on the subject. While you use a weapon or armor you and gain experience, you will identify it over time. So you can save scrolls by of identify by doing it that way. Um, that's why this talent comes in handy. I almost always like to put two points in here. Notice you only have five points to choose from, but you have eight talents available. So you do have to choose a little bit. So this one, eating heals the warrior when you're below 50% health and more when you're below 25% health. Um, I'm not eating anything now, so it's not benefiting me now. I'm going to go with what's going to benefit me immediately, which is uh, increasing the max shield available. So let's step in the grass and so collect some of these dew drops. Notice our water skin's getting filled up. Now it appears as if I've explored most of the floor. So I'll, what I'll do is zoom out. And I'll just have a little look around. So this room we didn't cover. We actually glossed over. So let's run back to that room. And I'll just click on the square right in front of the door. So one of the biggest tips and one of the things that's going to help you out the most is identifying your potions. Every room on the floor that is like, you can call it a trap room. You can call it a puzzle room. This is you know, a trap room, it's a puzzle room. You have all this toxic gas around you. So if you were to step and pass a turn here, you would take some damage. Like for example, you can identify these little vents on the ground and it says it's a toxic vent. Um, it's constantly emitting this toxic gas with no signs of stopping. So you need a way to prevent damage if you want to explore this room. These rooms in my experience always have gold. And if you want to buy stuff from the merchants later on, you're going to want this gold. So the biggest tip for identifying your potions is that every floor, so this is floor one in the region sewers. So it's kind of like 1.1, you could say. Every floor that has a trap room like this has the corresponding solution in the form of a potion. Um, also, the potions are in your inventory in the order you pick them up. So let's say this was on floor two. I would want to go with the latest one because that's most likely the potion I picked up on floor two. Like I picked this one up on floor one and maybe I picked this one up on floor two. So we have two potions. One of them is going to be the, what we, it's called the purity potion and that protects you from toxic gas. Now remember we picked up this rune stone. So you go over here on your inventory and you open up your velvet pouch. It has these rune stones. This is, remember the stone of intuition? Well, it helps someone identify. So basically we make a guess. And we know that one of these two is going to be 
the purity potion because it's for this floor, it's for this room. So let's go ahead and use our stone of intuition and it says select an item. So we'll go back to our backpack tab and let's pick one. The color is completely random. So I will pick the golden potion. I'll click on it here and these are all the choices. So purity, it kind of looks funny at first, but it's a gas mask. So once you can see the gas mask, it kind of makes more sense. So potion of purity, we selected the gas mask. Let's try to have a guess. Hopefully we get lucky. Hey, we got lucky. And since we got, we won that 50, 50 coin flip, we can actually use it again. So if you're right, you can use it twice. If you're wrong, only the one time. The cool thing about being wrong is in this decision though, is it's, is we would have known that the other one was, So if we had chosen this and we're wrong, we know, okay, well that's purity. So let's go ahead and drink it. And we can see immediately we have this buff here, the purification barrier. Another way to see it is you can go up here and go to the buffs tab and the purification barrier. You can click on it. So now we can walk through and collect this juicy gold. And also the, the skeleton over here, the adventurer that decided not to use their purity potion and try to get the treasure chest also dropped us a little bit of gold. In my experience, these rooms just have enough time in the purity potion to loot the three gold and get out. Notice I'm at one. It's just about to expire. So unfortunately, I don't get to use the well to the highest, you know, advantage. Um, but I don't want to run all the way back. So I'm just going to go ahead and use it now. And what I would normally do is drink from the water skin, but I'm full health. So unfortunately it doesn't do much for me. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is throw the water skin into the well. And you see when I pick it up, now we have a full 20 of 20. The cool thing about that now is when I find the dew drops, they won't be able to go in there, but instead they'll just heal any missing health I have. So notice this little, uh, debuff here. This is the hungry. We're not starving yet, so we don't need to eat yet, but it's just letting us know that we're getting closer to starving. So let's go ahead and go down the stairs. I believe we are on to the next floor. We could be very thorough and explore these walls and look for any hidden doors. I don't think there are any. Every time you do that, it takes time though, and we're gonna get hungry. So it's it's something you have to manage and, and do when you think is the right time and not do later. And we'll talk a little bit more about times when I would definitely do it um, as soon as we get into the strength potions and upgrade scrolls. So notice this room only has one door. Most stairs rooms have at least two doors. So this is a time when I'll go ahead and explore the walls. So you see, I, I search these three. So now if I go down here, I will search these three. And now I will search. I didn't miss the corner. So unfortunately I have to do the corner and now I'll search these three. And now I will search. There we go. I didn't have to search. I just got close enough. And luckily I was able to notice it on its own. So moving on to floor two, the enemies are getting a little stronger. You'll notice for every region, floor one is going to be the weakest enemies. And when you get to floors three and four, the enemies are going to be even stronger. Um, that is the same for the next region, the prisons, which starts on floor um, six. So six is going to be weaker, but when we get into floors eight and nine, they're going to get even stronger. Here we have a golden chest and we will examine it. You see it needs a golden key. One thing to keep in mind is the chest can be mimicked. While you move around the area, you'll see little teeth, but also if you examine it, you will... Um, it'll tell you that it's a mimic. So the gnolls are the next level up, the stronger enemies. The regular members, they're not as strong as the brutes, not as smart as, as shamans. Um, so since these guys are a little stronger, I may go ahead and invest a stone just to wake it up and to get a little chip damage onto it. And now let's get it a little closer. And now I'll step back through the door and we'll go for the surprise attack. And notice I'm actually hitting spacebar here instead of going and hitting on the wing. That's just because I'm on PC. We have a potion of healing and we have um, an unidentified scroll. These um, bookshelves, so let's I examine them. Might it burn? Yes, indeed, it will burn. So something to keep in mind. Okay, here we have the sad ghost. Go ahead and examine it. 
It looks like a shapeless spot of faint light with a sorrowful face. This is our first quest. You can encounter the ghost on floors two, three, or four, and each time it'll have a corresponding um, enemy it wants you to fight. I'm pretty sure this is angry at us. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a stone anyways and just get a little bit of chip damage. It was only one, unfortunately, but I'll take it. So let's go ahead and step back. The ghost may get in the way. Nope, oh, okay, we're gonna fight here. Taking a little extra damage, so I'm gonna go back to this door and get another guaranteed attack. There we go. So we'll click on the ghost and it'll tell us the quest. It wants us to slay the fetid rat. Um, so we'll cover the rat as we fight it. Uh, floor three will be the null trickster, which is a null, but it's range and it shoots you from range and it hurts very bad. You have to, you know, I'm going to cover as many basics as I can, but let's leave some things for you to experiment with on your own. There's still plenty of room to die and have fun, even with me covering most of the things here. Now at level two, we're a bit stronger. I don't want to go through these doors that I don't know what's behind. So I will just go ahead and fight the rat right here. I'm still going to save my stones, especially for um, the crabs, which are coming up on floor three, which hurt a lot. So let's go ahead and examine this chest. Make sure it's not a mimic. It's not. We have a golden key, so we'll open this one. We have found some leather armor. Fantastic. I'm not going to try it on now because it could be cursed. Well, while we're at it, you're on your first playthrough with the warrior. Let's take advantage of the warrior's strongest ability, which is notice you have this little red shiny guy in your armor. Well, let's look at the warrior's um, information here. The warrior starts out with a unique broken shield, a broken seal that generates shielding. The awesome thing about the seal is it can transfer a single upgrade with it. So we will get into upgrade scrolls. Let's see if this is an upgrade scroll. We don't know what it is. I'm gonna just go ahead and read it. I'm gonna take a little gamble. It was a scroll of remove curse. Notice it says cleanse. So this may not be cursed, but since we already read the scroll, I'm pretty sure we have to use it. Like, let's say we tried to like click away. Yeah, see, do you really wanna cancel? It'll be consumed anyways. No, I don't want to cancel. We'll just click on this. Your item glows with a cleansing light and a malevolent energy disperses. So it was cursed. Okay, we got lucky there. We got lucky first that we didn't try it on. And oh, notice we picked up a key. Sorry, I glossed over that. I picked it up so fast. But here's a locked door that corresponds with that key. And here is the fetid rat. Notice how it's got this kind of green aura around it. It looks different. So let's examine it. So yeah, something is clearly wrong. Um... It has a horrible stench. It's very powerful up close. Ooze dribbles from its mouth, but it seems to dissolve in water. Notice how it's given us the clues at how to deal with it. The, the stench, the ooze dissolves in water. So it may mean we want to step on water if we get poisoned. I'm going to use all my stones and just get as much damage as I can. Notice the thrown weapons is about to break and it was red. So I did, I'm pretty sure I expended one of my throwing stones there. Let's just go ahead and throw all the stones and I'm going to bring it back a little closer to this water here. Let's see. Let's just get right up in the water. This is this is risky, by the way, because creatures could come wandering through here and we could be fighting a couple of things at once. I'm going to hit wait and let it come to me and then I'm going to hit it. Let's zoom in here. You notice as I hit it, the gas started to do it to expand and now it's on me. So what I'll do is actually step back away and now there's no gas on me. So we'll hit it again. And now we have the caustic ooze, but look, it was immediately washed away because I was standing on the water. So unfortunately we hit for zero damage and the ooze came and washed us away again. Now I'm noticing this is spreading. It doesn't appear to be on my tile yet. So let's Hit it again. I don't think I'll I'll be gassed. Indeed, I was not gassed. I think it's when you do damage is when the gas spreads. So let's hit it again. Just the one, unfortunately. The gas isn't spreading. I don't think. It's a little bit on me there. Let's hit it. So we did four damage there. And now I believe... Gosh, I don't see the gas on me. So let's hit it again. 
Okay, we took it out. Now the gas is on me though. So I'm gonna go ahead and step over here. And the ghost has perfect timing to come talk to us. So the ghost always offers you one weapon and one armor for uh, your troubles. Sometimes these are upgraded. I believe they're never cursed. Pretty sure, but I'm, I'm not 100%. I'm 98% sure they're never cursed. Often they're upgraded. So I almost always choose armor. We do have the leather here already, so we may not need armor. Um, a strong weapon could be good as well. If this is a tier, notice it says 16. Well, this makes it a tier four weapon. So we have tier one through five weapons and they go up by two. So obviously tier one is 10 strength. Tier two is 12. Tier three is 14. Tier four is 16. And tier five is 18, the final tier. And out of there, there is one super strong battle axe that takes 20 strength. 20 being the max strength. So a 16 strength weapon we know is tier four. If this was tier five, I might consider going with the leather. Um, being that it's tier four and I'm not going to use it for the whole game, I may go ahead and choose the armor here anyways, because if it is a plus one, an upgraded armor, it could very, really help us out. If it's leather and I don't have any leather yet, it's almost always a snap decision. Um, so moving on to philosophy a bit, armor is definitely going to help you a lot to get your first couple wins. So it's not a plus one. And that means the weapon wasn't plus one anyway. So, you know, we're not missing out on a whole lot. You know, don't worry too much about FOMO in that regard. We are starving and we're below 50% health. So around 60 to 50 is usually when I want to eat. You don't want to eat immediately when you're starving. And notice how it took three turns to eat the, the no move three spaces. It does take time to eat, but at least we're going to start regaining some health. And, you know, I may go ahead and walk this knoll back. And we just discovered a trap, so let's examine it quick. It is a toxic gas trap. I could try to trigger it and get the knoll poisoned, but... I'm going to take a risk here and... bet that this door here is just a hallway. And there's not a bunch of creatures in there. Yep, it's just a hallway. So I'm going to get the free uh, accuracy hit on that. And then I'm just going to do it one more time, because I'm a bit low on health. Yeah, so... That was a nice chunk of damage. We could miss and it could, it could kill us. So let's make sure we don't miss by going through another door and hitting it here. Okay, so early game, you don't have a lot of health. You can actually take little naps and use your natural regain to um, heal back up. The one problem with that is the wandering creatures will come around and interrupt your rest and then you'll you'll have to take damage when you fight them. So they may just completely negate the damage that you took. So unless you are in a like a, a completely safe area, it is um well let's just find out. We have 7 health. I'm going to press and hold on the wait and notice we eventually start sleeping. So we went from 7 to 14 and now we're fighting this rat wandering rat came and woke us up. So let's go ahead and fight it. And when we are done, let's see what our health ended up being. So 15, great. We just healed seven for free. And with that amount of health, I do feel a lot safer, but let's go and try it again. And we healed up to full health now. Fantastic. Just by taking those little naps. Now you can't do that all the time because you will run out of food, but early game when you don't have a lot of health, you can do that fairly efficiently. Did I just see that door open and close? I'm not sure. I feel like I did. So let's go. Yeah, I did. And it's a snake. Perhaps it didn't see us yet. So let's go ahead and get in here. All right, we have found an alchemy pot. These require energy to use. Let's go ahead and examine it. Alchemy pot. We can use it to create something new. And we'll pick up that six energy and we'll also pick up this potion. So get it into the alchemy pot. Um, you have this little recipe guide over here and you will collect these as you play and they will tell you all the recipes and it's a lot at first it can be completely overwhelming i didn't really mess with it too much at first if you follow my playthrough guides you can see i make a couple things to help me beat the final boss just like about every run um for now we will probably just ignore it but what we could do is if we had unidentified scrolls, we could turn them into rune stones and then that would identify them. If we had three of the same kind of seed, we could make a potion of it and it will identify the potion. 
So keep in mind, we picked up this crimson potion on the first floor and we picked up the silver potion on this floor. So if we find a trap in this floor, we may need the silver potion. So this snake's gonna come fight us. It already sees us, so throwing a rock won't do anything. I do have to come through the door and wait and get the surprise attack. Unfortunately, it's a buddy is also coming and now the door is held open, so we can't get a surprise attack. So what we're gonna do actually is step into the door and when we step back, we will close it behind us. We were not born in a barn, and now we get the surprise attack. I clicked a little faster. I almost misclicked and missed the attack. But we leveled up. Let's put in our talent point. I may just go ahead and go into the identifying faster. Since I do have some armor now, I may want to identify it. And when we get to the end of this floor, we can start talking about potions of strength. Okay, this snake is sleeping, so let's go ahead and use a rock and just take it out before it wakes up. Let's kite back, and by kite, I mean run away. And wait here, get a nice surprise attack in, and there we go. One way to um, do math is look at your wart short sword. It says, do does one to 10 damage on average. So on, on average, you're gonna do, you know, around five or six. Keep in mind, you could be unlucky and do one. You could be very lucky and do 10, but most of the time you're going to hit for around the middle. Same with the defense. You're normally going to block one damage between zero to two. So remember, we're cutting corners. And sure, let's go ahead and sneak through here. We have some scrolls on the ground. And I don't like to use my rocks on the rats. They are very weak. I could probably just come up and fight. If I had missed and I had two of them at, on the same, at me at the same time, I would come back to the door and fight them there so I only get hit by one per turn. So we get some unidentified scrolls. We get a rat coming in. I'm gonna step to it and then we'll start fighting here. I think I saw that door open because we saw there was a knoll down there. It looks like it went that direction. I was worried it was going to come up and fight us at the same time we fight the rat. So we got a golden key. Let's go ahead and open up this chest down here. See what it is. Ooh, wand. So see how it's this kind of purple shade? So we know it's unidentified. And if we click on it, it tells us exactly what it does. It sends powerful lightning arcing through whatever it is shot at. And remember, it does bonus damage in water, but it also can damage you. Um, so you don't want to use it when you're right next to an enemy because it will damage you. So we can get into quick slots here. These here are our quick slots. So what we would do is press and hold or click and hold. And now it tells us to quick slot an item. So let's quick slot our wand. Now we can use it right from here. So we need to identify wands. What I will do actually is just shoot it once and it could be cursed. Fortunately, if it's cursed, it's not stuck to us or anything. We just can't really use it without taking... A damaging effect so it's not cursed or it would have said it's cursed and it would have shot out some funky ray and may have blown us up or teleported us somewhere random so let's shoot it again two three four four shots in a row a plus zero regular one shoots twice a plus one shoots three times a plus two shoots four times this is a plus two wand of lightning that is very strong so this is the seed once you I, I think it's once you beat the game on regular you can start using seeds this is version 2.0.1 so this seed will work here if you want to get a plus two wand of lightning on floor two when you are starting your playthroughs you can click on the little cog and you can find out how to put the seed in and over time it will regenerate naturally so i did just use all the charges but it's kind of a, for science, you know, let's figure out how good it is. Here we have the sacrificial flame. This is one of the um, kind of bonus treasure rooms. Perhaps a reward will be given if enough sacrifices are made. So basically what we need to do is kite. Another word for that would be lure. And we will, what we will do is get this rat to follow us. And we want to make steps where if we step here, we'll get hit for free. So we want to take steps where we can get it to follow us and not hit us. So make that little circle, come back, bring it through. 
And once you're on this platform of burned, notice that little blue shine. You don't have to be right on the fire. We just have to be on this area. Now, if we fight it, and we're not going to warp it, zap it there because we'll get zapped as well. Notice this, the fire consumes your offering and grows stronger. So we do this a few times and we will get a reward. It's usually a weapon or an item. And I don't think it's guaranteed to, you know, be upgraded or non-cursed, etc. So you are following us. So come on, as it follow us, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and watch these doors and make sure I'm not getting surrounded. Because if I am, I would probably want to turn and fight immediately. I'm going to wait here. I want to make sure it doesn't lose track of us and keeps following us through all these doors. Okay. Here. Oh, just went right before we lost a vision. It went um, question mark. That means it lost sight of us and it may turn around. Yep. So it turned around and walked the other way and it went through that door. Oh, you little. Okay. Come on, follow us. For that reason, it's sometimes worth it to pass a turd and let him get a little bit. Stop doing that. You know, I was trying to keep my distance because I wanted to zap it once for free with the wand, but unfortunately it was just being too troublesome. So I will just have to fight it face to fist and just take that extra damage. I didn't want to do that. So we're getting close to the 50% range. I'm going to go ahead and eat some food. So we'll start getting that natural regain back and we'll stop taking that starving damage. So let's watch these doors as we move around and see if we can find where the next creature is. Didn't see any open and close yet. Let's zoom out a little bit more. Okay, there's a snake and it sees us. Um, we definitely need to fight the snake with the wand. So we definitely need to keep this one gap snake move come here i'll just hit wait once oh you oh now it's right on us too okay so we will see how much snakes dodge and how annoying it is fortunately level three now we're strong enough we'll probably block or dodge hey we killed it in our first shot wow what do you know and here is our reward an explosive long sword explosive is cursed see it's red purple is unidentified red is identified and cursed right pretty sure it's identified knowing that it's cursed explosive weapons steadily build up power and eventually explode damaging us and the wear so right now it's currently cool to the touch and as we use it it'll get hotter and hotter Ooh, it dropped a seed fantastic and you can't unequip it because it's cursed so eventually you are going to get exploded So at the very least, we can sell this and get a little bit of money for it. There becomes a point where getting more treasure is not always worth the amount of damage and time you spend doing it. So we got a couple scrolls here. We can go identify them here in the, uh, in the alchemy pot. We want to use our wand not only to get it identified, but it's probably a four or four charges here now. So if we're not using it, it's not recharging. Before we go ahead and destroy these and make them into rune stones, one of them could be a scroll of upgrade, which are very valuable. So I'm not going to risk um, losing it. So if we look at the warrior here, they don't automatically identify scroll of upgrade. So I'm actually going to read these first. Let's go ahead and read it. Notice it says upgrade an item. So I really, I'm really lucky I didn't destroy it. With the warrior, you can read them to find the upgrade scrolls, but with any other class, unless you really have an item you want to upgrade, I would recommend saving them. You will get three of them between floors one and four. And you most likely won't get three of any of the other scrolls. So that's how you know, okay, well, I have three of these. This is almost always scroll of upgrade. And then you want to save it for either something if you really need to use it, you can upgrade some armor and it'll help you survive. But if you are surviving just fine, because you got a super lucky strong wand, you can save them until you get that juicy tier five armor or weapon. And you can put them all on that and you can put it and you equip it early. And then you, that's almost auto win by that point, unless you uh, step on a disintegration trap or something. Fortunately with the warrior, we have the luxury of reading them at first to identify them because of our seal. So I'm going to upgrade the cloth armor. The reason I did that is because if you remember, 
the broken seal can transfer a single upgrade with it. So we can get talk strength requirements now. This requires 12 strength to use it. Remember this required 10, but now that it's upgraded, it only requires nine. And we can also talk potions of strength. Okay, one second. Let's let this rat step on the water and do bonus damage with our lightning. Um, let's go ahead and identify this scroll by putting it in the pot and turning it into a rune stone. So if you wanted to spend six energy, you can make it into its stronger version. The exotic version it does a little more than the regular, but also costs energy. But we don't even know what it is yet. So let's make it into a rune stone. And look, it made it into two stones of blink. This rune stones teleports the user to the location. Very useful for getting out of a tricky situation. It is here in our velvet pouch. Remember to use these. These are very valuable and can help you out a lot. Don't forget that they're here. Another thing, if we wanted to, we could put three random seeds in and make a potion, but I'm pretty sure it would be unidentified. So here we go. We have the stones of blink, and that means that that scroll was, let's go up here to our journal, go to here again and look at the scrolls tab. That was a scroll of teleportation. So now it is identified for us. We know what it is. Fantastic. So potions of strength. Between floors one and two, there is one potion of strength. Between floors three and four, there is another potion of strength. So between floors one and two, if we had two of something unidentified, we know it's not the strength potion. And that means that one of these two is the strength. The reason I want the strength is because I want my strength to get to 11 because I want to wear this. And if I know if I put my seal, it'll come down to 11 and I can wear it. Um, also, if we haven't found the potion of strength yet, one of them between floors one and two, we know there's a hidden door somewhere that we missed. So we know we have to go around all the walls doing the little search until we find it. So one thing early on, it's very important to keep track of how many potions of strength you found. Because if we end up on floor seven or eight and we realize we're one strength below, it's very useful to know that the one we missed is on floor one and two, or it's on floor three and four. So just make sure as you go through the game, you are finding one potion of strength for every two levels. And so moving forward to the prisons, the next level, we'll fight a boss on five and then the prisons will start on six. So six, seven, eight, and nine. So we know on floor six and seven, we're gonna find one potion of strength. We know on floors eight and nine, we'll find one potion of strength. Um, also with scrolls of upgrades, you will find three scrolls in all four floors and now they're not restricted the same way as the potions are to one every two but just know that by the time we get to floor five we need to have found three scrolls of upgrades potions of strength scrolls of upgrades are absolutely crucial to becoming strong enough to beat the game so an advanced tip for identifying um an armor is when we have 11 strength Okay, we're going to get 11 strength. And how we're going to do it is we're going to risk wasting one of these potions. So I'm going to drink them. I'm not going to throw them because they'll break. I'm going to drink it. And notice the first thing I did is I went and I stood on some water because it could be a potion of liquid flame that's going to light us on fire. So let's make sure we're on the water and we don't burn. Let's drink the crimson. It was paralyzing gas. Um, fortunately, the enemy was not able to just beat us down while we were paralyzed. And we could actually run back to this door if we wanted to get a free hit. It did one damage. Unfortunately, low roll there. Let's step back to here. Get another free hit. Zero damage. What is your problem? Two. Oh, now we're surrounded. So this is when that strategy goes wrong. So we tried a little too hard. We've been a little too fancy. But what we'll do is make sure we're in a corridor so we don't have to fight two at once. So we'll just fight this one here and let's, let's just fight it. Quit being so fancy. We won't get a surprise attack now because the door is already open. So let's just get a little fancy again. So over time, new wandering monsters will spawn. They will be generated in. So the more time you take, the more chances you're going to fight something else as it randomly appears and starts wandering through the dungeon. 
So being too fancy can often lead you to being surrounded. So it is something to keep in mind. We leveled up. Let's go ahead and put it on this. We will automatically identify armor when we equip it. So we have 10 strength. This one has to be strength. I'm almost guaranteed it's strength. Let's drink it. Yeah, a newfound strength surges through your body. Now we have 11. So this is 12. Normally we can't equip it or we can equip it, but it's too heavy for me and it's going to slow us down. So let's equip it and see it is indeed 12. So we look at our turn timer down here. You see my mouse, see this little wheel on mobile. It's going to be up here next to your health and stuff up here. It is like not halfway. It's kind of like, like a third, two thirds way. When we take a step with this too heavy armor, a full turn would lead us exactly where we are, right? One full turn, but since it's too heavy, it went a turn plus a little bit more. If we didn't have it identified, but we know it's not cursed, we could put it on and with 11 strength, if it was upgraded, we would do one full regular turn. That might be a little, not make sense at the moment, but it's great for the other classes. You can identify things without actually identifying it. You could put it on early. Like this could be plus one it only takes 13. I have 13 strength. I put it on. And if this timer only goes one without taking any extra time, you know, hey, that's great. That's upgraded. Let's take advantage of the warrior's strength. We'll go ahead and detach the seal and it brings that plus one upgrade scroll with it. So let's affix it. Now this goes from 12 requirement to 11. Now we can use it. Watch this turn timer. It just went once. So it, it ended at the same spot it started. So now we are in very good shape. We're blocking one to six instead of zero to two or one to three, whatever it was. That is such a huge upgrade. Also, there's a chance this quarter staff could be plus one. So let's equip it. And how we will test this is we will fight. And if we get attacked twice for every one of ours, so like if I hit once and the enemy counter attacks me twice, I'll know that I'm too weak to use this because I'm attacking too slow. So a rat is a perfect thing to test it on. Let's go ahead and fight this rat. So we hit once, it hit us once. And we killed it, unfortunately. Killed it too fast. I don't want to test this out on a crab. The next floor, level three, they're going to be stronger. The crabs are going to hurt us pretty bad. So let's go ahead and just walk around a little bit more and see if I can test this out again on a knoll. And I may just go ahead and stand here and let them come to me. I'll take a nap. There we go. Knoll appears very soon. Let's go ahead and fight. I attacked once. It attacked us twice. So this is not plus one. It's unfortunate. We'll switch back to our short sword and we'll have to take a free attack. It takes two turns apparently to equip that. Let's go ahead and bring it to the door for a free hit and go ahead and finish it off there. Okay. So now we are ready to go on to floor three. Notice we stopped our auto run. I clicked on the stairs. It was going automatically, but it was interrupted because we took starving damage. And now we have this little arrow that popped up. This says remove resume motion. Very useful. It's just going to run us the rest of the way. But keep in mind, this can get you killed because you could be auto running, find an enemy, see an enemy. It's going to stop you because you saw the enemy. And then if you hit resume motion, you will ignore the enemy. And if it's a fast enemy, like a crab that moves twice for every one, it will move once and attack you, move once and attack you. And you, you could die very fast because notice how quick you run and it's just automatically passing the turns. So keep in mind that resume motion can be very dangerous. There are different badges for different ways to die. I think clicking resume motion should be one of the badges. So only one door. That means we're going to explore the different regions here and see if we can find the hidden door. There it is. Often they um, kind of circle around, so you would probably discover it naturally anyways if you went the other way. So it doesn't, it's not like a biggest deal to always find it and take it first. And sometimes it's just a shortcut as well. So I'm letting myself starve. I'm not gonna eat food too soon because we have to take advantage of the natural regeneration that we get from it. And if you're full health, well then you're not really taking advantage. Hey. This is a new enemy and this skill here as because I'm not going to cover the prisons or any of the other um, levels. So if you want to, you can watch my playthroughs. But if you just want to watch this one and go through on your own, 
more power to you. Make sure to examine the new enemy. The swarm of flies. It's a deadly swarm. Every non-magical attack splits it into two smaller but equally dangerous swarms. And of course, when you think swarm, you think of being swarmed, aka being surrounded. So what we want to do is make sure we don't fight this in an open room. I mean, it's a very good thing to do all the time anyways. And another thing we'll do quick is we're just going to go ahead and examine these treasure chests and make sure they're not a mimic. Because when we shoot this range um, wand, I think there's a chance it could zap to it and wake it up. Then we would be in a lot. So let's do a little bit of damage here first with the wand. And let's do even more while it's still far away from us. And now we can step back. And now we fight it here. And notice how when it split, it went backwards instead of to our side. Never mind these fly too. So if you're trying to fight, like if you think you're like being cool and safe on a bridge, they fly. So they will fill the empty spaces around you, even if it's just open air with no ground. So we defeated it once. And then the new one moves in. Every floor, every not every floor, but every region has an enemy that drops potions of healing. The warrior can identify them automatically due to their class trait, but the other classes can't. So it's really important to know that flies drop potions of healing. So if you have an unidentified potion, a fly drop, you can immediately, almost automatically assume it's a potion of healing. Sometimes they do drop other potions, but it's, it's a rare occurrence. Um, and I'll leave it to yourself to figure out on the other regions which enemies drop potions of healings as well. But knowing from the flies is a great way to early on figure out what are your potions of healing. I'm going to put a, there is a link, I'm saying now I'm going to, but let's just say I already did, a link to the, the wiki, um, which shows so much information about this game. Just make sure you're on the tab for Shattered Pixel Dungeon and not one of the other mods. So let's have a wait and see if it steps onto the water. It did step onto the water, which means my Wand of Lightning is going to do bonus damage. Look at that. Nice try, Mr. Noel, or Mrs. or neither. Or both. <laughs> no, you can be whatever you want to be. Um, I like leaving this piece of grass here and maybe maybe we'll use it, maybe you won't. But the main trick is if we're fighting something here, we can step around here and we'll get a surprise attack. And we can just keep going around a circle. Hey, look, that door opened. So a creature's there. It's a snake. A snake that we normally can't hit unless we surprise attack it. So let's do our little trick. We're going to come. We're going to see... If we move here, it followed us and we, for a moment, broke line of sight and now we can get a surprise attack. Look at that. We got it. Okay. You are awake. You're still sleeping. Let's figure out what this potion is quick. It's turquoise. We don't know what it is. So when we, let's make a mental note that there's this turquoise potion. So when we encounter a trap room, we'll know it's probably this turquoise potion. Um, fortunately, I can't get a surprise attack on you. I could zap it, but I'm not sure if it'll destroy the potion or not. I don't want to risk it. I know, you know, explosions and fire will destroy potions and scrolls. Okay, so there are not very often dead ends. So when you see a dead end, you want to go and you want to double click on examine or double press. And there it is. There's the door. I do like to step on grass because I'm getting free healing. And look, here's another door. You know, there may be some merit to leaving these undiscovered because it restricts the movement of the enemies. Oh, here is a fly. There's also a crab that's in there sleeping. I really don't want to wake it up and become surrounded. So I'm just going to get out of that room immediately. If I fight the fly here, I'll be attacked from this square and from this square from two at once. So I really don't want that. So I'm going to step back. You know what? I should get a little early damage in while I can. So let's go ahead and zap it. Now, hey, look, we used the wand enough times that we identified it. So now we can see it has four charges and it is a plus two. It does seven to 20 damage. And we can see when how many charges we have. So we have two out of four charges left. So let's go ahead and fight this fly here. And the spawns will just go in these two squares. I'm also going to watch these doors while I do it to make sure I don't get surrounded. Oh, you see that? It went down and around and now it's fighting me through this door. And now, so what, I have to run away. 
get back to a place where I only fight one at a time. Fantastic. I was clicking a little fast there. Um, it is, be careful not to get too spammy because something can happen in between the clicks. Let's go ahead and use the most of our charges on this crab. For new players, remember our great rule of thumb where we find a new enemy we've never seen. Let's go ahead and examine it and read. So they are huge at the top of the food chain in the sewer. So that means they're pretty strong. They're very fast and their thick carapace can withstand heavy blows. So they're very fast, very armored. They do a lot of damage. These are run enders unless you're getting some armor early, some ranged weapons, or you just are being very careful. So let's go ahead and zap it. Ooh, this wand, this wand, too strong. Here's a seed. All right, potion of strength, fantastic. Let's use it right away. Boost us up to 12 strength, and let's use equip this quarter staff because we don't want to do one to 12 damage when we can do two to 12. It also blocks a little damage for us. So, you know, when you fight things in this game, it's always just a little punch regardless of the weapon you have equipped, but we can, you know, use our imagination and imagine this it has a little block on it. So we have it in two hands and we're hitting with both sides, kind of like Darth Maul, and we're, we're blocking a little bit with us as well. So as you play the game, you'll get a more and more uh, intuition for where secret doors are. I just had a feeling long hallway, dead end. Let's give it a check for a secret door. So I double clicked here on examine and sure enough, secret door. Okay, we stepped in and look, this is a clear, trap room if i've ever seen one let's examine this trap on the ground it is a summoning trap triggering this trap will summon a number of monsters and you know what i bet you every square in here is a summoning trap because that's how these trap rooms usually work let's just to confirm examine sure enough two more so you know what that means you summon a monster the monster steps on here summons another monster chain reaction domino effect the whole room is full of monsters well if we had some like AOE damage, like the this wand will do pretty good. If I had it at four charges, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll let it get to four charges and then I'll come back and we can have some fun with this room. Um, with trap rooms like this, the solution is usually to levitate above them. So there's a good chance that this turquoise potion is a levitation potion, but I don't want to assume that yet because I haven't explored every room yet. There are still some empty areas so I could still find another trap room. I still could find more potions on the ground. Speaking of, we found another trap room. Let's examine this weird green shining stuff. What is it? It's floor, but a dense magical fire is here. It's so hot you can't move through it. So we need to find some way to extinguish it. Well, what we need for this is a potion of frost. So there's a good chance this is a potion of frost. Sometimes these rooms, you can get lucky and there will be actually a chilling trap on the ground. So sometimes I do like to give it a little search. Now here we did find a trap, but it is a, a shocking trap that's gonna paralyze us. So if we step here, we will be lit on fire. So we're not going to step there. We are going to just keep exploring and seeing if we can find any more potion. So as you can see, no explanation needed. I'm still doing the same strategies where I like to step backwards first. We found the keys to this locked room. So let's go check it out. And we have one of these. These are fantastic rooms. They almost always have great loot. You can see it is a crystal chest and you can see that we have one crystal key. One key for two chests. Oh no. Well, remember trusty examine button. It tells us there's a ring inside. And this one over here, did I see fangs? <gasps> you see the tongue? This is a mimic. Now, unlike your normal mimics that fight you and bite you super duper hard, the crystal mimics are very rare and they're kind of like if you play Dark Souls, the crystal lizards, they run away from you and they always have juicy, juicy loot. Um, so this one is not a mimic. It has a ring. Let's just examine this one anyways. We can see it has an artifact inside and also something about this chest feels off. Walking up trying to open it might be a bad idea. The first time I encountered one of these, it ran away from me, it got away, and I didn't get the loot. So what we're gonna do actually is open up the non-mimic and we will get this lovely ring. Rings can often be very strong. And since we have a removed curse scroll, I will put it on. 
right away. If I didn't have a remove, remove, remove curse scroll, I would not put it on unless I could identify it because if it was cursed, it could damage us very badly. So since this crystal chest mimic is going to try to run away from us, I'm actually going to stand in the door and not let it get away. And I'm just going to zap it. Notice we don't automatically target it with mimics. Um, they're not, you know, immediately identified as being a creature. But one thing I could have done that I did not show is that notice we walk around it. I'm clicking over here, right? And we walk around it. Well, if it was a regular chest, like right here, we would walk through it. So notice we can't walk through it. That means it's a mimic. So if you don't want to examine, you can always try walking through them. And I will show later, I'll walk through that chest. So let's go ahead and zap it. <laughs> and notice it just like made that little swearing sound. Uh, the little emote above its head of the, the expletives. That's what creatures who are trying to run away do. Later on, you'll encounter some creatures that want to steal from you and run away. And if they get cornered, they make that. So I don't know if it's going to fight us here. So yeah, look, it's not even trying to bite us. It just wants to get away. And it dropped and we get the artifact that it had for free. So there are many different artifacts, many different rings. Go to the wiki. They're explained very well, not only how to use them, but how to upgrade them and the ratios of upgrades, what they do, etc. This one in particular, since we found it, I'll, I'll just read it a little bit here with you. Um, and we can look at the breakdown. The descriptions, you know, they're not going to give you the math. I'm not going to tell you exactly, you know, you can use your own experimentation, but definitely go to the wiki and you can get some very in-depth guides of how to use them. So this is this unstable spell book. Um, it fizzles and crackles as you move the pages. Nice description there. There's no telling what spell you might cast. See, it's going to do a random scroll. So you can add pages to it. Basically, you can add your scrolls to it. And as you add scrolls, it has a random chance of using that scroll. So it can become positive. For example, I could invest one remove curse scroll into it. And then there's a chance that later on as I use it, it will do a free remove curse scroll for me later. It's, it synergizes very well with classes that have benefits from reading scrolls like the mage. You can like upgrade your charges. So let's stand here and walk through. See that? It's not a mimic. We, and you know, of course we know that because we examined it already. But let's see what we get. We get another ring. Let's try it on. We know it's not cursed. I mean, we don't know it's not cursed, but we don't know for sure it is cursed because like this one tells a malevolent magic is inside so let's go ahead and equip it not cursed fantastic i believe let's zoom out look around looks like we have fully explored this uh region here so i'm gonna zap you with lightning no i want to save my lightning charges for this room here so let's just go ahead and i don't know if that knoll saw us but we can wait. Look, it didn't see us. And look, there, that door just opened. So it just went down this. So it's not going to see us. We can go in here. I'm pretty dang certain this turquoise potion is a potion of frost. But you know what? Just for fun and just for the sake of reinforcing using our rune stones, this stone of blast is a bomb. Let's use that. Let's use that in the trap room. Um, so let's use our stone of intuition for the second time. Select this. And let's click on frost. If you're not sure what these icons mean, you can just kind of click through it and it'll tell you the different ones. And there are a lot of other trap rooms um, coming up in the other floors. And I'll leave that to you to uh, discover what they are. But most likely, drink the most recent potion you picked up and read the explanation of what it does. And they'll kind of tell you what you want to do. So let's select this and let's select frost. And yes, indeed, it is a potion of frost. Let's go ahead and throw this, but let's throw it a little bit away from us so we don't get affected by it. Notice it explodes in this kind of aura here. And now the magical fire went away. We can collect the juicy loot. Um, the pasty here, or pasty, is a Cornish traditional filling of beef and potato. It does the exact same thing as the ration. It's just another version of it, but it can also be used in some recipes. So it's good to keep in mind. Did you see me? I don't know if you did. Okay, now you did. Let's see if we can paralyze it. Shocking traps. I don't know the default range. 
it is sometimes larger and if it hits water the water will carry the current of the shock with it let's see if it gets here i'm going to throw my stone and when you don't attack an enemy you don't lose duration or durability on your ranged weapon so don't worry about that so let's go ahead and trigger the trap and it was just not quite large enough to trap it in there but you know there's something to think about something to play around with one more point here i'm going to go with this one because these will identify soon as i use them and when they do i will recover some hit points so notice i'm picking my talents by what's going to benefit me. when i'm not identifying something that talent isn't quite as useful let's just spend a couple turns waiting i saw that door open so keep in mind that there's an enemy down there let's see where it goes is it coming up or over well i didn't see it come through the store so maybe we come through and see if we can oh that opened again there you are let's see where it goes it's, okay it's going down so I guess we will probably have to fight it in order to clear out this last trap room. Oh, can we sneak by? Oh, look, we snuck by. It didn't see us. <laughs> clever, clever. Okay, so what we want to do actually is um, abuse the range a little bit. This could be tricky. It could hurt a little bit. And I'm about getting the 60 percentage. Let's just, in the abundance of caution, eat some food. And since the... The pasty can be used for a recipe later. If we get a raw meat, we can combine the three of them and make a yummy meat pie. So what we're going to do is throw an item. We could throw our stones, but they can be useful to do some damage. So let's throw something we're not going to use, like this cloth armor, and we'll throw it at the door. And look, now the door is open. So now we can attack things through this door from way out here. And what am I going to do? So... A huge tip I can give for you is take your time. You know, it may seem like an action dungeon exploring slash game, but really it's more like RPG chess strategy. Because whenever it's turn based, you don't you don't you don't have to do anything. You can consider all your options. So we know what's going to happen when these traps trigger. There's going to be a bunch of enemies here. So one thing I could do is I could stand here at the door and fight them all one at a time. But I can't use my wand there because I'm going to get zapped back. So if I want to stay at range, they are going to file out one at a time through here and eventually I will be surrounded. So I'll have to run back and fight them somewhere else. That is dangerous though, because I could get surrounded here by a wandering creature could come back and pincer me. What I would probably do then is just turn on it, take it down and then retreat to this room where I know no one can come from behind me. I believe that's what I'll do. I'm not going to stress too much harder but it is nice to give some things a little thought so i'm going to throw this armor and trigger this trap and look at how many creatures popped up and spawned on me and we can't see over here but it's safe to assume that these are all creatures as well some way to light them on fire would be fantastic i don't have that but i do have this nice wand and look how it hits them all at once isn't that just beautiful look how much experience i just got <laughs> Most of the time I skip these rooms, but if you have some like kind of way to do AoE damage, just go for it. And look, our items identified, and we got a ring of force. This is a fantastic ring to have early on because it's just a strong weapon. If you're not, if you're unarmed and not using a weapon, you just punch with it. You do 3 to 18 damage. Better than the core staff. So let's go ahead and keep using our wand here. I don't want to give these creatures the chance to come out and start overwhelming me. And now I feel like I've weakened them enough. I want to move in now and see if I can close off this uh, choke point here. So there are still a bunch of flies. The, I move one, the fly. Okay, this is time when we're doing the chest, the strategy. I move one, the fly moves one, I move one, and I the fly attacks me, but I do clog the choke point. Is it worth doing? We only have one more charge. So I could shoot one more time, but then I start getting surrounded. Let's do it. I'm going to move one. The fly moves one. I move one. It gets a free attack, but I do secure the choke point. And now I can only have to fight one at a time. I'm familiar enough with my weapon to identify it. It's just a regular quarter staff, no bonuses. If I take it off now, it's going to consume two turns, I believe. Let's see if unequipping something takes as long as equipping. Yeah, so it took one turn, I got attacked, but now I'm hitting with the Ring of Force. It does bonus damage. 
Look at that. 13. It doesn't block damage like the quarter staff, but very often, you know, a strong offense can be a good defense. But I would say get your defense in place first and then worry about your offense. Because if something's doing zero damage to you, you can do it, hit it for one, you know, in for infinity. But if something's doing, you know, 20 damage to you, you really need to make sure you hit it. And there always is that closet case that you'll miss. And um, closet case, corner case is probably the better word. Something is coming up from behind us. I wasn't paying attention, but I feel like we're pretty safe. And there are two of them now. How far does this arc? It does not arc that far, I believe. So let's just get some, let's step in here, see around the corner, make sure. I noticed the, the flies did drop the potion of healing. So that is already identified and we know this. Okay, so we know we're safe from here. So let's go ahead and just get some zaps in. Look at that one shot. This is very strong. And let's collect all of our glorious loot. You know, that experience we got, it was just fantastic. Look, we got two levels off that. Nice. So we notice we have the four gray stars and one golden. That means we have one more ability we can spend. At this point, I'd usually, I go for what I call one hit wonders, one point wonders, because if we look at what one point gives us, two to three hit points, and this gives us three to five. Um, so this is way better than nothing at all, right? And this is a little bit better. Like, let's look here, for example. This gives us one, this gives us two, that's a double. That's pretty good. Um, this gives us two, but this only gives us three. Like if that was to give us four, that's pretty sweet. So I'm gonna go, what I'm trying to say is I'm gonna put one point in here because like this is way better than nothing and putting one extra point in here isn't necessarily double in it. I don't know. This isn't the best example, but you'll find it later on. Um, for example, can we do a good example? So yeah. This one, it blinds an enemy for three turns instead of two. Isn't that isn't so much better than like not having this. Like this is way better than nothing. You know what I'm saying? So one point can be a lot stronger than two points. What we're I'm actually gonna do though is one thing I do like to use is getting two points in here because not only does it transfer your upgrade, but it transfers the glyph. This is a bit warrior focused, um, but I, I challenge you and, and leave it up to you to find the strong points in the other champion's abilities and take your time and read them, invest your points wisely, but also keep in mind, if you're taking these other tips and identifying your scrolls and potions and using the clever advantages, you don't need talent points. You can beat this game just by getting a plus six armor and a plus six weapon and you know, three more scrolls. Uh, with that in mind, keep it. you will find 15 scrolls of upgrade throughout the game. So you can get uh, plus six plus six and you have three more to play with so you can put them more in your armor if you want put them more in your weapon you can find a really strong ring and put them on the ring etc um so i'm going to focus on like i said the one point wonder this ability to blind an enemy is very strong i will go ahead and put one point in that right away alternatively this can be pretty strong because a 67 percent chance to get basically a free attack that's fantastic That skeleton had a chance to spawn a wraith. Wraith slate snakes have very high a dodge. So you need to kite the wraith back to a door for the surprise attack, or you need to use a wand. But careful using a wand on that because it could destroy your precious loot. Okay, so we are moving on to floor four, four the final floor of this tip and tips and tricks. This beginner's guide, this complete walkthrough, I'm trying to cover everything I can in depth everything I do and why, but there's a lot left. Go to the wiki, check it out here and enjoy some experimenting, you know, enjoy some dying, enjoy some funny, you know, if you die most of the time, it's kind of funny and it maybe was avoidable, but it's a good time to sit back and laugh, especially like if you were having a very strong run. So we put one upgrade scroll on this. We found one here. So there's three total for this first region of the sewers. That means on this floor, we have to find a scroll of upgrade. If we don't, we need to go and explore every little wall and find out that hidden room and even backtrack and do that until we find it. It is imperative we find all three. We have our 12 strength, so we know we found our two potions of strength. While we have it, it's worth talking about. The Ring of Force is a very strong weapon. We could start putting scrolls in it and we'll start to hit very hard. Um, 
the takeaway, the the thing you lose is some weapons have a bonus enchantment and have you know bonus little abilities. You won't be able to use a weapon. And also, if you're using a weapon, you could use a different ring instead of this. So my biggest advice to everybody is just to wait and see. If we put our upgrade scrolls in this, we can't take them away. We may find a very strong ring later that we want to use instead. Also, we may find a very strong weapon later that we want to use instead. And so we're waiting and seeing. We're not doing anything. We're saving up all our stuff. Well, unfortunately, that's when most people die because you'll hit a point when you're either getting hit too hard, you're not hitting hard enough or both. And that's when you have to make a choice. Use your consumables, use your scrolls, use them then. Usually it's going to be in the prisons or early caves and just use one of them at least to be able to survive. So if I didn't have this plus one leather, when I get to the prisons, when I find my first potion is of strength and I'm at 13 strength, there's a good chance I may go ahead and upgrade this mail because using that will allow us to save our potions of healing and allow us to save our other resources. And we start to snowball and we start to accumulate all these resources. So when we do need them, we can get out of danger. And you may find not only do you start beating the game every single try, but you have like 10 extra health potions. And then you can start playing around with extra things and doing fun stuff. Let's examine this potion quick. Don't know what it is. I was going to say for science, should I zap this and see if the potion blows up? For science, for the sake of the video, because I know I know fire destroys stuff. I know if fire destroys scrolls. I know frost destroys potions, does electricity. Generally, this is going to be a bad move because it's sleeping. So let's let it sleep. But for science, let's zap it for the sake of the guide. Let's see if it destroys the potion. I threw a rock. I forgot to use the wand of lightning. I misclicked. <laughs> okay. Since I said I'm going to do it for science, I'll do it again, even though it means I'm going to get zapped as well, because the if you're right in melee in one square, it will arc to me. Let's do it. So I took six damage. It did not arc to the potion. So we know we are safe to use Wand of Lightning next to potions. Just don't use anything that's going to freeze it. So, hey, we haven't seen this slime before. Let's go ahead and examine it. They have an elastic outer membrane. That means it'll take six damage maximum. It's difficult to do more than that. So even though the slimes don't hit us super hard, they are tough. You can't hit them super duper hard and kill them in one shot. No matter what, it's going to take a few hits. So mental note, we have an ivory potion here. So should we find a puzzle trap room? We know most likely it's the ivory potion. Let's go ahead and just zap. If you know, um, it's always sunny from Philadelphia, we would say, so I just started blasting and we are going to start blasting. I'm going to wait for this um, fly to come close. I'm going to step back. I'm going to fight it here. And notice we are hitting very strong with our ring of force. This is a very strong early game. We're lucky that we have this strong early game. And to a certain extent, people can say winning or losing comes down to luck. Not the case. Winning easier, more enjoyable, without any stress is luck. But you can still win every run. In my experience, I'm on like a 10 game win streak. But to do that, I often have to use an early upgrade stroll on some armor and use that to keep me alive. And I end up finishing the game weaker overall than like, oh, I don't have like a plus 20, you know, battle axe. I'm just like mediocre, but I'm surviving and I'm winning. Let's examine this potion. We know it's frost from earlier. Um, we only have one. I don't really want to wake everybody up at once. And I would like this to start recharging. Couple options, just step into the room, save my save my throwing stone here. Um, I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna wake up one. I'm gonna retreat back. And now we just have the one coming at us. Let's watch our backs here. Make sure nothing comes through these doors and let's fight. Now that it can see me through the open door, they are going to wake up and come after me. But that's okay. I'm actually just letting my wand recharge. The slimes, especially with our armor, especially level 7. Oh, while I'm on the fact, one kind of key takeaway is always be like a level or two above the floor you're on. So I'm on floor 4. 
at the very least want to be like level five, but you know, level six or seven is even better. But you can't necessarily guarantee that because you don't want to just sit around and grind experience because you'll run out of food. So the food is always kind of our limiting resource. We can't like sit here and farm experience because we're going to run out of food. Um, I have some mystery meat here. I have some extra items. So now notice our inventory is full. We can't pick anything up. That becomes a main issue between here and the prisons until we can get to the merchants and start um, buying the increased bag space. So the merchant will sell something for your scrolls. It will sell something for your potions. It also sells something for your wands and ranged weapons. And that is determined by what you have the most of. So right now we have four potions. The next merchant will sell us a bag, a bandolier actually for our potions. One of the ones I don't find useful at first is the one for the ranged weapon. So if I had a whole bunch of ranged weapons, I may drop them on the floor before I enter the merchant's floor and make sure it gives me something for scrolls. That's an advanced tip. The reason I went down to floor five there instead of finishing the floor is I want to drop these extra weapons and stuff. I'm just gonna sell all this stuff to the merchant. So let's just bring it down here and have ourselves stop being um, totally full of random junk we're not using. And now when we move up and explore the rest of the potion of uh, floor four, we can pick up <laughs> floor four or floor. We can pick up the items here and not have to worry about being encumbered. And we're... So we have a key. Here's our locked room. Let's go see what it is. It is a nice little library room. So these library rooms can be suspicious. Sometimes you may want to burn. I don't think there's a hidden chamber behind here. So I'm not going to do it. And I don't believe I have a means of lighting it on fire. This could be, this could be uh, an explosive potion, I suppose. So the crab is going to move two spaces. We could step back. It'll move into the door. We'll get a surprise attack. But I want to get the damage from the, the lightning instead. So I know it's going to move one and attack me. I believe that's worth it. Get that big damage from our super strong wand. You know, another thing I could do in these kind of cases, like let's say I'm worried there's a crab in there, I want to hit it early for the Huntress. And if you have strong ranged weapons and items, one thing to do is you know, consider stepping back here, opening the door with a ranged item and then seeing what's in there. Oh, there's a crab. Okay. So it's going to go one, two, one, two, one, two. I have three turns. So I may just go ahead and zap it. And look, we took it out. That wand is too strong. So, you know, so I could consider like opening the door from way back here, stepping up, seeing if I can get any free shots. See, like right now I could actually shoot it if I wanted to. Um, I'm not going to. I want to save these for the crabs. We know that we can beat the gnolls with no problem. Leveling up. I'm going to go ahead and go into this one. As soon as I get two in it, I can start using these uh, styluses and I'll know that I can bring the bonus I get to my next armor. Okay, well, let's have a look around. I believe we have fully explored the whole floor. We have gotten three scrolls of upgrade and two potions of strength, so we know we are safe to move on. Alrighty, well, first four, first four floors of the region. So a little level breakdown. You have the sewers, the prison, the caves, the Dwarven Metropolis and the Demon Halls. Each one of those is considered a region and each one of those have, um, well, five floors, the fifth one being the boss room. So now we're on five. We know we're about to fight a boss. On floor 10, we'll fight a boss. 15 and 20, et cetera, we'll fight a boss. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to fight this boss. This will be up for you to have fun with and explore. Just remember to examine it and to get your, your context clues from there and your hints and do your best, I'm sure, you know, if you lose, you'll know why you lost and you can come back and try again. Um, moving on to the prison, I will give you a warning. You're going to start to encounter ranged uh, enemies. The best thing to do with ranged enemies is get into melee. Get one square next to them because they, like, like most wizards, they punch you pretty weak. From distance, they hit you very hard. And in order to do that, sometimes you need to use line of sight. So for the most part, if you are next to a door, just get out and wait behind the door and let them come to you and they will come to you. Also like this, you can use grass. If you can get behind some grass, you can also block it. The thing is, 
Notice our site here. See how we can see around here? So you can still get zapped from like right over here. So, but if you look like right here, see how that's dark? You can't get zapped from there. So if you want to come in the door, go like down to here, it will have to come in. But what I normally do is I just go into like right, if I can't wait right behind the door, I'll wait like right here. And I know I'm going to have to step in. It'll get a free punch on you, but you can take a free punch from a ranged caster minion. So each floor will have its own unique ranged minion. And um, I'll let you enjoy discovering them as they shoot you from halfway across the room in the dark. You don't even know where they are. And all of a sudden you are debuffed and you're getting destroyed. Well, that's just kind of how it works. That's the time to use some of your consumables. Like if you can go invisible, you can use your, um, you can use your stone of blink either to try to get right next to it or to get away and go hide behind the door, etc. Try to find another way around. Well, I know I didn't cover everything. I covered just about as many things as I could think of, but I still left some things for you to uh, find out for yourselves. There's a lot of trap rooms we didn't cover. There's, we never discovered um, all the different items. I didn't talk about strategy for your strength. I'll do that really quick. One thing to keep in mind, this requires 16 strength, so we can do the math. If we do an upgrade scroll, it'll cost 15. And then after one, it goes three, six, nine. So three upgrades will bring it down one more point. Nine upgrades will bring it down another point. So you can think, well, I have six of these saved up. I could bring a plus 18 down three to a plus 15. And we know that we will get 15 strength by the first, somewhere in the first two floors of the caves, right? In the prison, we'll get two more strength. In the caves, we'll get two more strength. Well, the first two floors, we'll get one strength. So we'll know that somewhere on level 11 or 12, we'll be able to equip, you know, that awesome, super strong weapon we just put all those upgrades into. But don't do them yet. Save them until we get to that point because you may find something better or you may be dying and don't let yourself die. Upgrade something weaker, at least one. Just put one in there so you can use it. The best time to do that is when it's one away. So if this wasn't cursed, for example, when we are at 15 strength, use it then and get it down to 15. So you get one scroll, you get the most bang for your buck. You're a lot stronger and um, I believe you'll find your success there. Same with the armor. So you find like a 16 scale armor, use it to bring it down to 15, equip it for the warrior. Just put your seal on it. You can upgrade it right away. There are alchemy solutions for this as well. It's a lot to get into. I'm, I'm not sure if there's a lot of alchemy guides out there, but I'll just, since we're talking about strength, I'll show you this one. Take your time to read these. It's a lot at first. Just take small bites and figure it out. You'll pick up the, um, you'll pick up the recipes as you go. But one thing to consider is potion of strength plus, no, just potion of strength. Potion of strength in the alchemy pot. Each region will have one alchemy pot somewhere, so you'll find one eventually. Turns into Potion of Mastery. It brings down the requirement by two. Very strong, but keep in mind, you don't get the Strength Potion. So instead of having a max of 20 strength, you'll have a max of 19. And that will affect your curve. So what I mean by that is, instead of finishing the caves at 16 strength, you'll finish them at 15. So you're always doing math, you're always planning ahead. As long as you are planning ahead, taking your strategies, examining things, remember that time's not passing now, even though we see the water coming down. We're not starving, we're chilling. Nothing bad is gonna happen unless we move or make a decision. So um, keep that in mind. You know, I wish you the best of luck. Feel free to leave me a comment, send me messages, send me screenshots, go check out the Reddit. A lot of people are very knowledgeable, answer comments very well with long descriptions. You know, we love helping each other out. I love new players being able to get over that early frustration and get into the being able to win their runs. You get the first couple wins under your belt. It gets a lot of fun. And then we can start experimenting with the different challenges and some of the self challenges where we only put all of our upgrades on like a weapon and we have to run around and never get hit and just like defeat things. There's a lot of fun things you can do with this. Um, I hope you get the most out of this video. I hope you were, if it didn't help you, I hope at very least you're entertained. And uh, yes, yeah, so let me know how you go. Um, big shout out to everyone giving their best. All right, cheers.